What's up, guys? I'm back once again with another exciting story about, well, the story's not exciting, but you're back to another exciting episode of Insane Disappearances, and today's story is going to be about Shane Montgomery. Now, I picked this story out of all the others because of the fact that David Politis picked this as one of the most strangest, one of the one of the few strangest cases that, that he's written about in his book. And he's also showcased it on Coast to Coast AM and a rig, another radio show called Where Does the Road Go? Uh, so this is what today's story is going to be about. And so we're going to get started. All right. Okie dokie dokie. This is right here. All right. Okay. Um, like I said once again, today's story is about Shane Montgomery. He's been missing from Philadelphia, PA, since November 27th of 2014. He was at the right age of 21, just coming into manhood at that point, you know, age-wise. Um, he was at uh, his height was 5'11", weight was 140 pounds at that time, uh, and that photo I showed you was from Dateline. Uh, just in case you wanted to know. All right, so he was a graduate, uh, a graduate of the Roman Catholic High School and a senior at Westchester University in Philadelphia. On November 26, 2014, at 9 p.m., Shane was at his cousin's home in Mania uh, when both decided to go bar, hop bar hopping uh, Thanksgiving night. The pair went to several establishments and ended up and ended their night uh, at Kildare's Pub at location at the location of 4417 Main Street. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, at 1:15 a.m., Shane sent a text message to his cousin, who he knew was in the bar but couldn't locate. Uh, couldn't locate. At 1:28 a.m., he made a call to a friend. Sometime between um, about 1.45 a.m. and 2 a.m., Shane was escorted from the bar by the bouncer. He wasn't staggering drunk, but he was removed. <clears throat> this was the last time that anyone spoke to Shane. The Westchester senior did show up off, uh, didn't show up for a family function on November 27th uh, and was reported as a missing person. The search started quickly. The FBI got involved and interviewed the staff at Kildare's Pub. There was nothing valuable gleaned from any of the interviews. The police did find CCTV footage of Shane crossing a small footbridge between the pub and the parking lot. The footage came from Christie's Nail Salon at 4436 Main Street, located near the pub. The footbridge crossed uh, the small Maniunk Canal that uh, paralleled the, uh, the, I guess that's Skullkill River. Uh, he was seen walking into an adjacent parking lot. Thousands of people rallied around Ke Kevin and Karen Montgomery, Shane's parents. Uh, they contributed thousands of hours of volunteer time searching the nearby the nearby neighborhood and even searching the river. The Golden State Underwater Recovery Team was in the water for much of the time. The first major break in the case happened on December 21st. Shane's keys were found. Uh, the keys were found, no, okay, yeah, the keys were attached to a Philadelphia Eagle, a Philadelphia Eagles lanyard, and uh, and were found in the Skullkill River, uh, not the canal. The search was focused on the canal since Shane was last seen on the footage uh, on on the on the footbridge crossing uh, that body of water. Now, the keys were found at the river's edge. He was last seen in the area behind the nail salon. The search continued. Uh, the searches continued. Um, on January 3rd, 2015, the same volunteer underwater recovery team uh, was back in the river searching for Shane. At 12.15 p.m., they were in in an area near the Maniunk uh, Brewery at uh, the location of 
20 Main Street um, at Shures Lane. Uh, let's see, they were 10 feet from shore in waist deep water. Uh, yeah, in waist deep water when they discovered Shane's body. There were no details that he was or wasn't wearing. Uh, wait, there were, there were no details uh, what he wa was or wasn't wearing. On January 5th, 2015, a friend of, the sh of Shane's family stated that the coroner told them uh, that the death was accidental. Now, see, once again, that is a major criteria in all of these cases. Whenever the coroner's office cannot find a cause of death, they feel like they have to appease the family by telling them something that they that they know they're going to believe is if it's coming from them. And they'll often say it was an accidental death or accidental drowning. He suffered from or he, he succumbed to um, uh, what do you call it hypothermia. But that isn't always the case with this because if they can't find the cause of death, obviously something happened to them that they can't seem to figure out. It is unexplained and unknown to their, you know, expertise. Yeah, but it is what it is. Okay, uh, there was no release by the medical examiner's office. There were press statements that the official cause would be released in April. Shane was recovered in the exact location he was last seen on camera. What's fascinating about this is that detectives were Detectives were interviewed by various news uh, news sources during the investigation. One detective made a statement that if Shane went in the river, his body would be far down the river. Uh, I think it's also interesting that it's been four months since his body has uh, since, since his body was recovered, and the medical examiner's office has still not made an official statement other than. Uh, his death was accidental. With the FBI involved, I have no doubt that the body is getting multiple looks by uh, various experts um, trying to determine how long uh, it was in the water. The toxicology results and a plethora of other details. <clears throat> the last thing they want done is an outside expert stepping in on once the body is released and doing a secondary autopsy that exposes something they haven't discovered or released. <laughs> Big surprise, but it sounds more like a little bit of jealousy compiled with the fact that they feel like they're going to get embarrassed because they couldn't figure it out. So I'm like, hey, if you couldn't figure it out, they're going to find somebody else they can. Simple as that, because the parents want to know what happened to their son. I know I would. And if it was up to me, I would make sure David Politis was the headliner in trying to find out what happened to my son or my daughter or whoever else. But that's just me. You know, I, you know, I got full, you know, confidence in David Politis because he's, uh, you know, uh, all around a uh, good uh, expert in all of this. You know, he knows exactly what to look for. Okay. Uh, let's see. I, I think the FBI involvement will be a new trend in these types of cases. Uh, there is much <clears throat> that they will want to learn or and understand. And that's one thing that we haven't been able to do is understand why these people are turning up dead the way they are. I mean, bodies pristine, dry in a wet area, but they don't have anything wrong but their underwear. Everything else is removed, like their clothing and the shoes. Weird. Makes no sense to me whatsoever. Um, one of the one of the first items they'll pursue is finding a witness who uh, observed the victim going into the water. This is an absolute key to the entire phenomenon. And it, de it definitely is a phenomenon because it's something that can't be explained. People try to explain it. They try to say it's this or it's that, it's serial killer, pedophile, um, whatever. But they don't go beyond that. Because it's a lot easier for them to say 
stuff like that. Like it, like they know their son was kidnapped, or they know, or they know that their son was abducted. They're not gonna say anything like, uh, "I know my son was kid was uh, taken by aliens," or "I know there was some type of creature out there that ate my child." But yet, most of the time, when stuff like that happens, the only thing you find is tiny little bone fragments, or maybe a little femur, you know, or maybe just the top of their cranium, like what happened to little uh, Jerry Atadero in you know Colorado, you know. So obviously, some type of creature ate him alive. And left nothing behind but a tiny piece of the top of his cranium, or a tiny piece from the top of his cranium, that far rather. But you know, like I said, all we have is theory and out of this world facts. I'm just saying, you know. Okay. Um. Oh, okay. Uh, I can only hope that. The Philadelphia Medical Examiner did an extensive toxicology screen that included GHB, which is another thing that is found in a lot of these uh, people who are turning up missing. You know, they like GHB somehow gets into their system, but there is no entry wound as far as intravenously, like a needle or something like that, or ingested. You know, there's no because they they'll be able to figure out if it was ingested just by. I guess following the trail of GHB in their system to say that it was ingested through their, you know, esophagus or something like that. You know, I'm guessing, you know, like I said, it is what it is. Okay, um, my guess is that if something unusual was found in Shane's system, we will never know. And that's very true because any weird evidence that is, reco that is recovered from a crime scene, like well, not almost say a crime scene, but recovered from uh, the area where the body was found. If it's something weird that they can't seem to figure out, they don't want to be. I'm guessing they don't want to be looked at as uh, people who comes up with these weird um, facts about the case. All the parents want to hear is that someone took their child. They know who it was. And they put them to justice. They don't want to hear weird stuff saying that we can't find a cause of death or um, they were found in a weird way. And when you pile all these cases together, you see that there is a pattern. All the men are always found face down, you know, in a dry creek bed or in a creek bed, or any kind of body of water with no clothes except for their underwear on. And the shoes are removed and missing. Why would you even take the shoes, which makes no sense. I guess that's a form of DNA because the feet will be in the shoes and the feet will sweat in the shoes. So, therefore, sweat is also a form of DNA. So, I'm guessing they would try to remove any uh, evidence dealing with DNA from the body, which means the clothing and the shoes. I'm guessing. But you got a full body right there full of DNA. But, obviously, if you take away... The clothing and the shoes, which will have his DNA on it, but you leave the body. Obviously, they removed all um, evidence of DNA from the body, which would mean blood or whatever else. I don't know. I'm just saying. Because I look at it like this here. If you can't find a cause of death in the body itself, you need to look up here in the brain. And to see if, you, to see if the brain is even in the body. Because think about it. <clears throat> here's another here's another analogy. On the Matrix, Morpheus said, and I quote, "But this is after um, um, Neo said that uh, so you die, you can die even if you're inside the Matrix." And he said, and he told him, "The body can't live without the mind," which is a true fact. The body cannot live without the mind. They, this right here is our battery source. This is what keeps us going. This is what keeps us alive. You remove the brain. No more function. The body is just a dead stick. So I'm thinking that somehow the brain was phased through whoever's cranium and removed and taken away. Therefore, the body just dropped dead. I'm just saying, if you can't find a cause of death in the body itself, like uh, your typical case of drugs or whatever the case may be, stab wounds, bullet holes, uh, strangulation marks on the neck, the only thing you got is this. Now, if the brain is still there, there's probably some sort of 
mental damage to it as far as a creature causing some sort of trauma to the brain which overloaded its cerebral cortex causing him to die I don't know I'm just that's just my personal look on what could be going on with these people with, with them dying and then and the coroner's not being able to find a cause of death but you know you can agree with that or disagree with it. if you got any ideas shoot them to me in the comment section below you know hit me up let me know something maybe you guys may know something more than what I know I don't know <clears throat> and if it's just as weird as what I'm talking about hey this is what this this channel is for the weird stuff dealing with these cases that's what I talk about the weird stuff I, you know I'm not saying I'm leave I'm Xing out the facts but the facts lead you to this point where you talk about weird stuff if you know anything about it you know, he even mentioned that on one of his uh, interviews too <clears throat> But, uh, yeah, this is a pretty weird case, you know, the fact that he, you know, couldn't find his friend, so he up and just leaves, you know, the, the area where he was at, and somehow ends up in the river, you know, they don't even know how he ended up in the river, they just know he was in the river, so, uh, and that right there would be the main mystery, how he even ended up there in the first place, now, the body could have been dry, sitting on the edge of the uh, river, it could have been wet, I don't know. But they found him in the river. That's the main point. They don't even know how he even got in there. They didn't mention the fact that um, they didn't ever mention how long he'd been in the river because they'll say the body is the person has been missing for two weeks. And next thing you know, they find him in the water. Now it said it looks like the body has been in the water for like three days, but he was missing for two weeks. He hasn't been in the water for the whole two weeks. So where was he at the rest of those times? Something to think about, people. I'm just saying, if the body is in the water, and it and the body was missing for two, the person was missing for two weeks, so that will make you think the body was missing for two weeks. But it only shows in the autopsy report that he was in the water for three days. Where were you at the rest of those days? That's right. <clears throat> makes you think. Weird. Every case ends up like that. I'm just saying. So. If you got any ideas, you know what to do. Hit me up in the comment section below and shoot me some ideas if you got any. That's what I'm here for. If you got any ideas, I will post them on my next on you know on my next vlog, you know, on my channel. You know, I will give you credit for it. I will make sure everybody knows who it was that told me this. I'm not gonna take anybody's, you know, ideas and run with it. I don't I don't do stuff like that. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to educate people on what's going on these you know with these cases. So that's it. That's what I. That's all I got on this story. Um, the next one I want to get to is about a young 22 year old uh, named Joshua S Snell. Joshua Snell. That's gonna be my next uh, post. So you know what to do. Keep your eyes peeled to my channel. Stay tuned because I will be back with another story. Peace out and aloha. <laughs>